I gotta go down the store. What's going on I'm, down there? I'm here, my links. Root Ruth, Ruth links? Yeah. So what are you gonna do? Just paint I have tar stuff on it? No, I got some of that black link. They oh, tried to put that other stuff like stuff. They put that black stuff up there one time years back. The tar stuff. Yeah. Put it up there in the roof paint it. Because it was leaking. Yeah. So we've done stuff for it for them. Somebody could flag that down and send them in here. That would fool you. See, so you've been to roomies before? Yeah. Yeah. Holy shit. Oh, my roomies is a symmetric. Have you live? Okay, guys. Uh, hello, everyone. Thank you for joining our another live Q and A that we're doing. Um, we're doing another. We're doing a raffle today as well. So we're raffling away a Cyclone Three sprayer as well. We'll uh, give you guys the winners at the end of it. But um, we do have some questions cycling in at this point. Um, of course, I'll let the introduction start, and we'll start answering some of the questions that you guys have for us. I'm Walt. Thanks for joining us. I'm Ken. Uh, welcome. Hope we can answer some questions for you. Yeah, so we're giving away that uh, the new Cyclone. Um, there's a, they've updated the Cyclones to the Cyclone 3 from the 2.5. It's basically an updated Cyclone, does the same stuff, still shoots up to the 30 feet. They just updated some parts out of it. But um, waterproof. Will... Some of the water circuitry is waterproof now, which is really there a good you deal. Go. So, so the circuits have also become a little bit more waterproof. So it's over the board. I think they made it more durable. Um, well, it last a little bit longer. But um, in terms of the questions, we do have a lot of questions coming in already. I think some of you guys are already waiting for us to start. So thank you for joining us. But um, I think the first question that we actually have is going to we have a lot of long questions this time around. Right. Yeah. So Ken's definitely got for that. Um, the first question that we'll start with is for Mr. Carlton. Um, he is wondering about the thrips. Um, long grass, my long grass has a lot of thrips. Are they in danger? Do the overwinter, do they overwinter and how do you get rid of them? They, the, uh, the thrips are, you'll see a problem with them as they begin to hatch out in the spring. Mm -hmm. And, uh, so yeah, uh, a good lawn spraying at this point, but you can you can get rid of thrips usually in the lawn with uh, bifenthrin. Bifenthrin. Yeah. Okay. They, they uh, stress the grass. Yeah, so it's just uh, it's a real not going to kill the grass, but they do stress it. Yeah, I would. Uh, in, you know, if you have any trouble with thrips, with uh, I use bifen it. Bifen it is the um, still so still the best. Cool. Some people feel like bifen xts will give them a better knockdown because it's an EC formulation rather than the. Encapsulated, so and there's a leaf hopper too that right. stresses, and that's uh, I've noticed that's in Bermuda quite a bit. Uh, it doesn't kill it, just creates stress on the right. Grass. Yeah, I've got a lawn full of them, and uh, they, they don't, I haven't sprayed yet, but if they get any worse, I'm going to. But I'll be using bifen IT for that. And bifen IT yeah. to spray the grass down, you yeah. nothing too heavy. And, and leaf hoppers, you know, when you're cutting the grass, mm -hmm. every step you make, you get they start, yeah. In front yeah. Of the <laughs> Cool. Okay. So yeah, you can definitely use the wife and IT for your thrips. That'll definitely help out. Wife and IT takes care of all your general pest control needs too. I mean, we're talking spiders, fleas, ladybugs, stink bugs, over the board. It's a decent insecticide to put out when you're doing large areas outside in sense of turfs and trees. Wife and IT is definitely a good option to take because of its cost. Yeah. I've always right. called it my, uh, my desert island. Yeah. 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 If I got one chemical I can bring with me, I'm bringing bifen. That does everything. <laughs> Just don't drink it. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and all right, so bifen IT for the thrips, that'll definitely take care of it. The one with the mosquitoes and the bifen, we have a question about um, lightning bugs from Mr. Raymond Ray. His daughter is a big fan of big lightning bugs, like a big fan of lightning bugs. And what can we do to prevent to kill our lightning bugs when we're combating mosquitoes on our yards? And other I mean, benefits. Not to kill. Yeah, not to kill, right. Yeah. And we're talking that kind of ways to keep away from beneficial insects. Yeah, that that let me answer that. Um, yeah, no, I've done a lot of fogging. Um, and you, you want to basically try to keep away from flower parts, uh, the pollinators. Now, I've never really thought about uh, the typical you know, lightning, lightning bug. bug. Um, it's still an issue. Of course, there. You know, 
they're more nocturnal as far as flying around. I, do you know what they do during the day? I'm not. I, I I'm don't. Not I, I know they rest uh, because they haven't been a pest uh, issue. Yeah. Per se, I've, I've never really studied. Have anybody so, call us about it? Yeah. So. But anytime you you're treating for mosquitoes and and especially in the spring where you got all these flowers, uh, try to try. I, I know most companies don't just isolate it they just take the backpack mister and just blast it but, it blow just, it away. but if you yeah. can hit the lower leaves or try to wait until some of these flowers disappear because you know, the pollinators will die from this stuff yeah the yeah. sad part about that is that is that we've always told people to spray late in the day so right, and needs. that's where the lightning bugs will the come out. Come so, out I mean, it's, so you it's, have to gauge it out for yeah, sure. You yeah. definitely know your lawn better than we do, yeah. right? I mean, that's yeah. And some of the green products are good too, but don't be fooled in the trap to say, "Well, this won't kill, kill you. that." Because because if it lands on a, a honeybee or bumblebee or butterfly, for that matter, or right. moth, it will kill them. I mean, in terms of honeybees, if you have a hive, it doesn't hurt to call a local beekeeper and get them to pick up the hive. And they will do it, right? If you see well, a little, we're, we're talking about just the bees pollinating. In general. Yeah, okay. we're, we're really not talking about. Now, of course, if, you, if you're if you fogging and your next door neighbor's got a uh, colony, you, you want to be cautious about uh, uh, any kind of drift. Right. I mean, you make sure to get on that. Right. You want to make a good neighbor. There's that the uh, the product is Maverick, uh, that Maverick uh, perimeter. Yeah. It says right on the label that the dried residues dried will will not harm honeybees. Keep um, but while it's wet, it can still kill them. So you know, if you're, the fog gets on them, that's a problem. But your dried I'm residues not, will be fine. I'm not convinced of that. I mean, they say it on the label, so it has uh, to the be label, true. yeah, yeah. So, yeah, if it's but, wet, remember it's dry. If it's wet and they land on it, it's still a voice. I've also gotten uh, a good bit of feedback that people don't have as good results on the mosquitoes with Maverick Perimeter. Oh, so it doesn't seem to work as well as Wi-Fi well either. Yeah. Duraflex yeah. and some of the other products we use. I mean, if you there's other ways to do pet. I mean, mosquito without even spraying, you have options between mosquito bits that you can put out, right? right. You have options where you don't necessarily need to spray for mosquitoes. You can use yeah. different traps and you know. Well, the well, mosquito right. bits are designed. To yeah, go. they're they, great. They're designed yeah. to go into uh, standing water to stagnant. Now, we do have something, that, I don't see it up here, but uh, I talk about a lot with my customers, the mosquito repelling granules. Mm -hmm. They work really well. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, they, they, they're made, they smell a little goofy. If you put them in your, your uh, Around. area, you're trying to uh, uh, have a picnic mm -hmm. or whatever, uh, but it, it smells like garlic and lemongrass oil. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. But it, yeah. it does work for at least yeah. a weekend. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, it'll definitely. So you have options. Make sure I, you. I also have three of these in, in the exact uh, exacto traps they, in my yard, they, they and they it. have made a difference. They don't eliminate mosquito problems, but they do thin out the population. I've had good luck with those. Not that. And you. General, it's all about a reduction that we're talking right. about. For mosquitoes, it's all about a reduction. I mean, that's the crucial part we have to understand. It's all reducing the amount of mosquitoes that you see. I mean, you're never going to have a mosquito-free lawn. Right. I mean, that's that's pretty... Yeah, more, more, more often than awesome. not, though, you, you might have some standing water or stagnant water that you do not know about mm. in, in your yard. It could be a drain um, that, that's pulling water away from your house, and there's always whole water in that. And, or it could be a trash can you have outside. You don't ever use it, and you, you don't think about it too much. It, it, it's got water at the bottom of it. That yeah. happened to me. Absolutely. It doesn't take much. I had a couple of flower pots stacked up in a, in a corner of the yard that uh, it, they were at an angle, and the water wasn't draining out of them. Yeah, it'll, it'll, it'll so be you look at it, and there's just hundreds of larvae. Right. Yeah, yep. absolutely. So, yeah, that's a problem. So go on, to, go on to the lookout for that kind of stuff. Now, going over, um, we're going to switch uh, roles a little bit. We're talking about ants at this point. Um, there's small black ants and fire ants in my backyard around my pool and grill, but not in my house. Any suggestions to get rid of both with one product? So he's dealing with fire ants and small black ants around the pool and his grill, where mm -hmm. he's grilling. He's wondering if there's any kind of product that we can use for both of them. For the black ants and the fire uh, fire ants, and this is from Otis Valentine. Right. You go well. Well, well. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for passing that. Yeah. Well, if the reason well, I, I got a really good product, like, <laughs> is, 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 
labels a little bit uh, different. That we, we like to use a non uh, repellent insecticide, and there's uh, there's a couple of them out there. There's a uh, uh, denatepon, pipinil, um, uh, what's it now? Metaclopred. Yeah, metaclopred. Yeah, that that would probably be your best one. Um, it, and the the Thipinel is is a great product, but it's only labeled for the structure of the house. So put spraying a, a foot up and a foot out. Although if you have a patio right off the structure and it's attached to the structure, you could argue that that's part of the structure. So right. a lot of a lot of times your ants will nest under slabs, mm -hmm. uh, a pool deck in particular. Uh, that's a prime area for. Uh, ants to nest under, and um, and of course the grill is a good food source. Food source, yep. yeah, that's a definite yeah, food source. So there, there are baits too that might get both. Okay, <laughs> it's you know with baits it's always kind of iffy. Um, like we know that extinguish plus that's my favorite right, for fire right, ants, right. but a lot of other ants aren't as keen on it. No, like CSI has come out with uh, the Doxum. Doxum, and I, I I got it in the back of uh, my car. I'm waiting to. Try it Dark some I've heard is a really. I, I, haven't, heard, yeah. I haven't used it yet either. Yeah. But I'm excited about that. Um, there's uh, the uh, uh, Bayer makes the uh, 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 complete Max Force Complete. Max Force Complete is a good one. Yeah. And, 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 and Boo. And Boo. Okay, I haven't used that one. And no, no. They changed. Bayer is no longer. Oh, they're not Bayer anymore. They're, they're not Bayer anymore? No, it's In View. Wow. I think In View is their. No. The pest control division, right? It's yeah. still better. Yeah. It's oh, it's still just a different. Still make aspirin, um, but it, but that the the, um, the max force complete. Um, I've had fire ants eat that. And they will, and that feeds so, on. So baiting so with a granular is an option. That's another take option both. as well. Okay, yeah, exactly. You, baiting, you you do have to have patience because just you put it out and they they don't go for it right away. They may doesn't, ignore it. Doesn't doesn't mean that they're not going to go for it tomorrow. Or a week from now, right? right. They, they feed on what they want to feed on, and then uh, I try to stress that. Okay. I had a customer today that was a little aggravated because they're not eating. I said, well, "Just chill out, uh, have a little patience. Tomorrow they might go for it. Next week they might go for it. Uh, it's possible they won't go for it." And even when they do feed on it, you still got to give it time to be processed within that colony right. as well, exactly. right? So when they do pick it up, it made time for them to accept the bait. But when they take the bait back to the colony. It still takes time for it to be processed and work its way up to the queen where she's so that uh, to answer that Emmett, that, that original question, uh, we think uh, the Emmett corporate or the brand name, we've got a couple brand two names. Two F, there's so many right, right now. Yeah. Two the two and two and yeah. Prime Source has a good one for a good cost as well, called two F. I mean they're they're coming out. They're, they're definitely here. Yeah. I mean these are good products, so yeah. Right, now, uh, all right. Now, in terms of now, we have squirrels. Okay, so we have a question from squirrel. This is from Carl. Um, he's looking for a way to just deter squirrels. He's tried bonide repels all, mm -hmm. and that stuff stinks. And it needs to be on a daily application. He feels like, and when it rains, is it's gone. Mm -hmm. Right. So his concern is, is there anything I can do to deter squirrels from any kind of repellents or? I, I don't know of anything in a repellent that. Consistently yeah. works for so squirrels. Does he mention they're getting in his house, or it says or that he's he's looking to deter them. I mean, he's having where they're around the property. He just doesn't want his prevention. Let's talk. It's got squirrel prevention. Let's say that. I, mm -hmm. I would I would say right off the bat is you are not going to be able to keep them away from your property. Right. Realistically, I I mean keeping them out of the house is a, is, is a process it, called exclusion. Hey, that's the and, same. That's and uh, yeah. exclusion. For the most part, ought to be done by a professional. Okay. Uh, especially if you have a lot of heights yep. on there. Exactly. Uh, they, they got the tools. They know how to do it. Is it is expensive? If you want to do it yourself, you you can. Um, uh, but you 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 need to make it where it's not easy it's sealed, to get sealed. in there. Yeah, seal proof your home. Now, if they are in there, and, and for anybody out there who might be watching the two people watching this, uh, if you ever get in, if they ever get into the attic, you have to trap them. Yeah. yeah. Before you exclude, I always you don't wait for them to go out. They, if they, if you exclude them and they just happen to be outside, they'll find a way back in. How do you guys feel about those traps that you put the one day you put the trap on the outside of the house? It'll be able to come out of the house when I go back in. 
the yeah. one way. And, and I mean, if, if, if you've got a good exclusion, uh, maybe, but I have had them chew their way back. No, I mean, yeah, again, it was, if there's babies in there and that's a mother, I mean, she will wreak havoc. I had in my father in law's house, I had a case where I excluded some squirrels. Yeah, yeah. And unbeknownst, I was a beginner, I didn't know any better, and, and there were babies inside. And I sealed mama out, and mm -hmm. she chewed a hole through the roof deck, right through the shingles in the roof deck to get back in. Father in law was my not father in law was, was not very happy. proud of you on that. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, so you were left out of will. Yeah, pretty okay. much. Yeah, <laughs> it was never in the will. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> okay, so I mean, so this is another grass question. This might get a little funky because I don't know what type of turf you have, right? We just got our generic question about, hey, what's the we're having trouble with Dallas grass and nut grass. Okay. But there's no, we don't know what type of turf he's on. Okay. The nut grass is a little easier. You can. Could we, you, is there a solution for one solution for both? No. Okay. So there's no Scott. This is your answer on that one. Yeah. You you can use product like uh, sedge hammer. Uh, is really effective and uh, pretty much is going to be safe on most of your turf grass. It shouldn't or, be a problem. Or that new uh, um, Atticus product. Yeah, I haven't used that. Yeah, yeah that's yeah. another one that, that should cool. be. Uh, and that's the that's the same ingredient part, isn't it? Yeah, that's it the product, is. Yeah, it's, it's, uh, it's, it's a generic set camera. They finally came out with a generic. So that would work on that. Dallas grass is a is a uh, is a different problem entirely, and uh, it's a perennial grass. And if you have uh, cool season turf, there's not much you can do other than Roundup. Hit it with Roundup. Uh, spot application right. and then repair the damaged area by reseeding or resodding. Even though like glyphosate, you think some of the grasses will like they'll tend to they tend to help get healthy eventually over time, right? Even if you hit it with the glyphosate, if you well, it'll grow back, it'll, it'll grow back, and, and it'll, it'll, it'll take care of it for the most part. But in cool season turf that doesn't have runners like St. Augustine and Bermuda and things like that, you're probably going to have to reseed or resod. Quick question on this one too. This is by BJ Jacobson, um, Dollar Weed and Centipede Lawn. Dollar wheat and centipede, you could probably get away with. Uh, uh, you could do like a three-way match. I was going to say like that. How about atrazine? Is that not going to? Atrazine. Is atrazine will help That's too. That's good. Okay. And blindside as well uh, is a lot of your sensitive turf grass like St. Augustine and that you can use. Uh, blindside is good for that. Okay. Now, in terms of, well, we have another one for PAC. He has where we get a lot of questions in, so we kind of have to. Keep it as like smooth. as smooth as we can. Um, it's from PAC. He has he's been using Dipel, but it's not improving his caterpillar leaf. In fact, they're feeding on the leaf still, and he's using Dipel. I mean, Dipel is pretty good stuff. Yeah, I've never seen. You, it. I mean, yeah. what I think the real question for you might be is how much what the mixture rates are. Are you mixing it properly? Are you hitting the tree in the areas that they're actually feeding on? And frequently enough. And frequently enough. That'd be a good it's idea. Washed off every time it rains. Yeah, right, yeah so definitely call us on that so we could get some more information on your end. Mm -hmm. um, same thing in the yard question. This is done by Uchenna. Um, blowflies in the yard. Python or blowflies. Blowflies. Yeah. Something's dead. Ah, so okay. Something's, something's dead. There, something's so. done. There's some kind of organic matter that needs to be picked up. Yeah. Right. Okay. Exactly. So, Uchenna is organic matter. There really isn't a spray for you. You just got to dictate and locate the issues where they're breeding and feeding in, and you have to remove that issue. And you pick that up, they're we're, gone. We're a little bit surprised because um, bug flies or flesh flies. They're flesh eating or, they're flies. They're mostly in the house. It's in the house when you kill a Most people rat. Really notice them outside in the yard. Possum okay. dies in the crawl space, something like that. Okay, guys, so we got some of our winners coming in now. Um, so we had a total of uh, 1,835 entries for this, and we have about 10 winners, right? So we'll start off with two of the first two winners. We have uh, Mr. Eric P. from Villa Rica, Georgia. Congratulations. All right. And then our second winner is going to be Amy V. from Jenks, Oklahoma. Um, we have about eight more winners. I think we're still waiting on all that to populate. So we'll give you some more uh, winners as, as we go along with this. But we have eight more winners yeah. to do. What's the procedure? I think you have to sign up. I, I mean, just work here. Yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 They have to, you have to sign up. Okay. They have to, we give everybody like a link or we sent an email out. You have to sign up. I think the sign up's done now. It's a little too late to sign up. But we sent you guys emails um, that give you the ability to click on that and sign up for it. So you're put inside the raffle. And it's a great product too to, to win. I mean, that's a it's a pretty good prize to get out. I mean, yeah, these cyclones is no different than what Petro guys. They're, they're yes. really they're yeah. really good, yeah. good sprayer. Um, I think most of the people if they haven't used them before will will be 
pleasantly surprised with the durability. This isn't the $20, $50 backpack you might get from Walmart, Lowe's, or Home Depot, guys. I mean, they give you a great warranty with this. You get like a two-year warranty from Correct for Clothes on. Right. Yeah. Two, and that's directly with them. They call that one 80, They don't even have an 800 number. It's an 803 number. That's a physical number that you can actually call. And they do a really well job for warranties on it. Like they, they stand behind their they product. They take care so, of their customers. They're, they're, a real pleasure to deal with. I mean, just along these past few weeks with this weather warming up and these companies coming together, the amount of cyclones that we've sold. I mean, yeah. PCOs and lawn care companies run right. for it because it shoots up to 30 feet. It's got variable pressure to it. I mean, it'll do what it needs to. Yeah, Absolutely. Yeah, I, I would like to say if you if you want to spot treat certain areas and, and a lighter spray that flows on is probably not the... This is definitely for larger areas, but I mean... Yeah. Puts out a lot of chemical it does. quickly. It so, does. But, if that's what you're after, if you're spraying a lawn entirely, flow zone is hard to beat. They really put it out quickly. Um, yeah, but if you're trying to take a non-selective or like to say, yeah, you're trying you know, to use a small use, area. Use a Smith uh, sprayer. That's Smith we, sprayer. We have that both good. a that's manual it. or uh, a battery operated. And yep. of course, my opinion on battery operated over yeah. manual is once you go battery, you don't go back. Now let's <laughs> try. So we're going to go back to some of the questions. Oh. Uh, they're populating, guys. Um, we're trying to get as much as you can for you guys going. Um, now, uh, what crabgrass control that I can put down will be the quickest? To fade away so I can reseed. Reseed and this is by Jeff. To, they're all going to be quinclorite is the chemical for 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 that. If you have a, a turf that's safe, you can't use quinclorite on, on, on centipede. Centipede, or centipede or the northern grasses, the cool grasses. Yeah, you can cool season turf. Your, yeah. Even even uh, you can put it on Bermuda, fescue, zoysia. Um, so there's a couple of of southern turf grasses that you can put on one. That's when quite does work well. Right. Use a surfactant, guys. I don't care what herbicide you put in. Use yeah, a surfactant. Yeah, we're you particularly use MSO. MSO, okay. MSO, three-way max. You have options on that you can use. But again, with these grasses, it's really crucial for us to know what type of turf you're sitting on. I mean, I got to know if it's Bermuda, Zoysia, Fescue, Kentucky, Centipede, so we know give you the wrong couple and burn it. Okay. Now we got another mosquito question going back. I mean, I'll hang into this real quick. This was about mosquitoes and harming bees. That it's very, it can get very tough, but I think one of the major things that we can do is spray in the evening. Don't spray any flowering bulbs. Anything bright and colorful, bees will zip line. They don't really dibble dabble too much on plant leaf and vines and stuff like that. They tend to zip line bulb to bulb to bulb. Stay flowers. away from any flowering plants, any bright colors, any flowers that you see, stay away from that. Um, and, and don't spray massive areas. Yeah. I'm sorry. Yeah. If you have an acre property, please don't treat the entire acre for the mosquitoes. I would say go about a hundred feet out in all directions. Mm -hmm. There's no reason to spray four acreage of property where you're never at. That's just a waste of time, chemical, and energy. I would say. Yeah. I mean, that's, that's true. Yeah. You want to go seventy to hundred feet out in all directions. You're just making a dead zone so they can't smell you. The pregnant female can't smell you. So. Go 100 feet out. I mean, stay away from any flowering bright bulbs. Um, I mean, if you don't want to spray, you don't have to give other options. You can put stations out there. You could put bits out there. You could put garlic out there, right? There's a garlic repellent called mosquito barrier, right? Right, And that works excellent too, but it stinks. Of course, it's going to smell like garlic, but you got to give and take some One thing I've noticed that uh, mosquitoes, it, it lasts, the garlic will last for a, a while. Uh, and the smell lasts for a while, but uh, humans, when they go into an area, they smell it immediately, and then they get acclimated, and then you don't smell it. You go, it's you like go, going into a nice you restaurant, nose you, smell it, yeah. you smell yeah. that good cooking, and then you don't smell it. You acclimate to the smell. I didn't think yeah. of that. Well, it's okay. called nose blind. Yeah, it eventually it's goes blind. Okay, cool. Okay, I didn't think. All right. Now, in terms of German roaches, we have a question about German roaches. Uh, I think this is a bit of a strange question. Um, they're talking about German roaches, spiders, and ants out in a big yard. Um, German roaches aren't primarily in a yard like that. Is that, that yeah. They're going to be, they're yeah. transferred people to people to people. They cannot survive outdoors. If you're talking water bugs, the big pink looking roaches that tend to, you know, in the south and the southeast, we have these big water bugs. Right. For that, I mean, you can do the bifenthrin type product. You can use any kind of insecticide. They're mainly residing in trees. You, so the, there's the, the look alike. Uh, the Oriental Asian, oh, yeah, okay, Asian yeah. cockroach, yeah. which is down in Florida, primarily. Yeah. It looks just like a German roach. Uh, the difference being they're really strong flyers. And, outside. No, and no. I would 
correct you a little bit. Please, please. I mean, uh, German Roaches can survive outside. Uh, they just don't do well outside. They don't want to. They prefer to be inside, inside. and eat off grease and soaps and yeah. food droppings. Yeah. yeah. Cool. So, so yeah, that's that's the thing. If it but if it's uh, an Asian roach, and, then and I tell you what, we have some really good material for German roaches. They are very easy to take care of if you follow our procedures. Yeah, these days there's a lot of good stuff. There's for really not. They're, they're good baits. They're good IGR. Savatry came out with a bait called a uh, uh, Savatry. That's exactly what it's called. It's a roach bait that they're actually using. I think that's the end. Well, yeah. You want to use an IGR. Right. And definitely add an insect growth regulator. You call it Savitri because I say Savitri. Savitri. Uh, Savitri. Whatever the case. It's Italian. <laughs> yeah. And, uh, so. and then that there's an, also that Doxum can that I you can't also see which have one. That's defense. I can't see what's what. Yeah, Doxum, Doxum is really great for German roaches. This contains the baits, the sprays, and the IGRs all in one can. You don't have to sit there mix things up and get a fantastic anything. product. Too. Doxum's really this. expensive. Oh, what's on the end? I let's have see, a, what do we have? a striker. It's the flushing control. agent. Okay. Now let's go over with some more winners. Um, our third winner is actually going to be uh, Khaleesi out of Palm harbor florida so congratulations. Right, congratulations then we also have a kevin n from bell canyon california all right kevin and our fifth winner is brenda t from tucson arizona we have five more winners to give off um we'll definitely get back to some more of those winners but in terms of the questions let's get back to because they're really coming in right now um Wow. Bull ants. Only two people watching. Bull ants. Right? No, we got we had thirty one people waiting for us. Yeah, yeah. Um, well, if, if my bull ants, if they're talking, I've heard a lot of people refer to carpenter ants as bull ants. That mm, all I got is persistent bull ants in every palm I have. Yeah, it's called it's classic it's carpenter. If they're in palm yeah, trees, okay. If they're red and black, they could be. Heard of bull ants. Well, people call carpenter ants. Big, bull ants are big. A lot of people call them bull ants. Um, Press control uh, company has been. I'm from Savannah, and everybody in Savannah called them bull ants. Oh. So, um, but they're a carpenter ant, and there's also the red and black bird in the Florida carpenter ant that you'll see in palm trees a lot too. And uh, so you could probably get those with a bait, you know, if you if you uh, get the uh, the advanced 375A. 375 and put it on the base of the base. Yeah. It tends to work. You put it around the base. You could actually put it up in the tree if there's a spot that will hold it, but. Um, yeah, is, is, it, was good. is it true carpenter ants tend to feed primarily before the sun sets? Like they get hyperactive? When Not the before, but at sunset. And like, yeah, right. Like when, when the sun's be, about setting. From, from 8 p.m. to midnight. That's when they huge. really tend that's to when like, when like, get hyperactive. Right? That's when they really feed on the bait. Yeah, absolutely. So if you're putting out a bait, if you want to know where to put it, you can usually go out at night uh, just flashlight. after dark, flashlight and find them. And if you put bait along the trails, uh, you'll know in a minute whether they are, are you know, liking it or not. They'll and pick it up, carry it away. Can I follow up on that? If the carpenter ants are getting in the house, let, let's go with something like the Taurus. Taurus, some paper and base. Yeah. Yes. Uh, I mean, let's not even mess with them. Let's just. And replace them. If they're at the house, you have wet wood. I if, mean, if, if, for, if for anybody that hasn't used it, Taurus is a generic of term door, a lot less right. expensive. And uh, same active ingredient, nine point one percent fipronil. So that that would be the thing to use on the structure to keep them from uh, now. And, from and it always works. Indoors. And it always works. It just yeah. works. Yeah. Now, exactly. We have ninety nine. Another question about powder post beetles. Okay. This is a this is I think a decent one. It's a powder post beetle in an eighteen inch cross spray. He doesn't want to spray. Can he use a powder? Well, no. Yeah, let's first of all, uh, sorry, this, let's figure out if they're active. Or do you just have holes in them? Or are you okay. actually seeing fresh uh, frass on the ground? Coming out on the ground. And, and that's for Larry Miller. So, so yeah. Larry, yeah, just you know, look for that. Uh, take a hammer, beat on that joist that uh, that wood. If, if it rains frass, then you got a, you got an issue there. Uh, and improve the uh, moisture content. Uh, maybe have your crawl space sealed. Uh, Boracare is our, or Timbor is our go-to product on there. Well, right. the 18 inch crawl space. It's, it's, it's tough, tough to easy move around. around. Yeah, it's not going to be it's easy. You're going to have to get way. there, apply wood preservative on the sides of the wood. Um, you're not impacting this generation. It's all about the next generation, right? And 18 so. inches. I'm calling somebody. 
Yeah. 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 You might want to. Yeah. yeah. There's but an option. But you can encapsulate. I mean, you can lower that humidity. That would end up. Yeah, yeah but encapsulating it in your yeah. crawl space is not. We have easy. a. I think this is more of a label based question. Okay. Right? Can Taurus be put inside a hose and sprayer? No. There is no reason to ever put Taurus in a hose and sprayer. No, first of all, you couldn't control it because the label says that you've got to do it in 18 inch bands, no further than a foot up, a foot out. So you can't you go more than a foot away from the foundation. Right. There you go. Exactly. Okay. So no, you can't. There's other chemicals that you might get off for a better rate for a cheaper cost that will do the same thing. There's no, because that label on Taurus will not allow for it, but you have other chemicals like the mm -hmm. metacopri. Yeah. If you want to use that in a hose and sprayer and get something similar like the Fipronil, like the Termidor or the Taurus, yes, you have. Personally, I don't think hose and sprayers are that accurate. Uh, yeah, I agree with it. The finer the mist, the better your application. Um, now we have a pre-emergent question. Um, pre-emergent with prodiamine. Mm -hmm. How late can it be watered down? If you go longer than a week, you really start, you to start breaking it down. Yeah, it, it breaks down. Okay. Um, so you need to it needs to be watered in. The sooner, the better, in my opinion. Right. But they, they know it starts in seven days. It will start breaking down. Yeah. So, I mean, it definitely breaks down within seven days. So, you want to get half an inch of rain in it, whether you chase it down with a hose or that, you know, the rain come down on it. It's either way. Yeah. This is a pretty interesting question from Mr. Dennis. Um, this is Ecovia granulars in flower pots in the perimeter of home. Okay. Is it a good option? Yeah. Ecovia in flower pots? Yeah, that'll work too. Use there. Yeah, absolutely. It's not gonna hurt. It. It's not gonna hurt anything. I, I mean, I, I don't. <laughs> there's a way to use it. What are you anymore? using it for? I mean, you can even put yeah. mosquito bits. If you have any like tiny flies coming out of your flowering pots, but you have overwatered it, there's a fungus growing on the top soil. I'm, mosquito bits is an option. I'm thinking it's probably for ants. It's for ants. What I would okay. think. It's yeah. what we're going to use yeah. the eco via for. But uh, yeah. Now, in terms of white flies on silver maple trees, can you inject something in there? And this is a question from Chris. They are, but without the equipment to do it, it's, it's difficult to do job. that. Soil drench uh, with a metacloprid. And, and, uh, yeah, with Dominion 2L, it's got great label for soil drenching. Um, it can be injected, um, but you'd have to have the equipment with the you know, pressure injected. Right. It, it, it becomes a hassle. If you don't know what you're doing, that's better left. Now, let me uh, uh, add on, though, mm -hmm. that the, the drenching and the systemic is, is long term. This, if you if you come home and there white flies are covering your tree, you're gonna have to do a foliar spray. I think so too. Because the time that the meta corporate starts working, that they've already done a lot of damage and moved on to the next tree. I I've had really good success by um, using a, a combination of bife and XTS, and, and, XTS and or the IT. It doesn't really matter. Either, either one. one. I've really noticed respond. that if a few white flies respond to both, spray the tree down with the bife and do put a little wetting agent on that. Uh, if you're going to follow surfactant it. with the XTS, especially, yeah, you know, really help that stick to the leaves. Okay, okay. Now, in terms of what's good for chinch bugs, Eddie Griffin, Bifen IT, LP, those are usually work, but there's some resistance on that as well. Okay, so yeah, there's Arena, the, the granular product that's probably the Cadillac right now, that's the one that uh, is newer, there's not as much resistance to it. Yeah, so we're saying XTS, yep. Yeah, absolutely. Oh, okay. Pyrethroids in general. Okay. There's, there's there's, definitely it's there. spotty. It's not widespread yeah. resistance, but uh, uh, enough that uh, you know it makes people. I'm not saying a tap on. Do we have anything labeled on that? Um, I have checked the label on that. I'm okay. not sure about the dinotefurin. I, I believe it is labeled for it. Uh, Imidacloprid is as well, but I believe the imidacloprid label is is for suppression. Yeah. Uh, uh, not control. Okay. So. Okay. Uh, so yeah. Let's get let's shoot some more winners off since we got them pulling in. Um, we have a Mr. James M from uh, Halifax, Massachusetts. Okay, uh, yeah, congratulations. We'll be giving you uh, some more winners in just a second here. Let me go ahead and get some more questions going um, now. So we have a carpenter bee question, right? So do you need to use bait or a hormone for carpenter bees when I have a bee trap? And we have two of the bee traps that we carry. Right, and this yeah. is the hormone with delicious bait. Yeah. Right, so you definitely want to. You can definitely use the delicious bait. I mean, it definitely helps. It definitely helps. Right? It's not necessary. Um, it what I, you know, we have found over the years. Once you get a bee in the trap, it attracts other bees to the trap. Find so a dead one and throw it in there. Yeah, that absolutely. helps. Yeah, right. It seems to help. Yeah. Yeah. Smear um, it a little bit on. Smear that. it on because they tend to compete. The males are competing for a female at yeah. that point, right? Yeah. So 
And uh, that's so the whole reason. The smell why of the bee will draw other bees, but the delicious bait is good. Um, and uh, you can you can smear a little of that delicious bait when you use it around the opening and dribble some inside so it kind of runs down the inside of the trap. And I tell everyone, by the time you see one carpenter bee, the season started. Yeah. I mean, it's a late, you're already late. Yeah. You got to get out there before you see any kind of carpenter bees. Put these traps out there when you know the weather's getting warmer. And the quicker uh, you start. Of course, yeah. you got in the springtime like we had in, in Georgia. We had an early March yeah, uh, yeah. warm spell. They started coming out, and then we got cold. And it's, and it's, they so went away. You do, you do have some fits of goes and stops. Right. Okay. This is a bit of a tough question from Tap. Um, it's springtails. Springtails that are swarming in my pool. It's already a wet area. You handle that one, man. I yeah. I mean, springtails. <laughs> <laughs> um, springtails. springtails get tough. I don't know. They do. I, they I get know. very tough. I, you know, I have done stuff as crazy as using uh, a Bifin LP granules and watering that in with Bifin XTS. Yeah. Uh, you know, the, the problem, springtails are just tough. You, you want something residual and something quick knocked down. Uh, Conquer used to work pretty well. It was an easy formula, and just like and the Bison Star SDS. Plus, we did the same thing. I mean, in terms of the pool, it's a, you're going to be looking at I've a I've not had reduction. a call like that before. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, we're, uh, and getting in a pool? I've had a few, um, yeah, where, where they were getting into the pool, and they're usually coming off of the landscaping yeah. and the mulch next to the pool. So uh, uh, treating that is, is tough, but EC formulations like Bifin XTS. Get it in the soil. Get it, get it deep in the soil. Get it through the mulch and yeah. in the soil. And that, that's Nothing to encapsulate. Anything. And uh, we see a lot of springtails in new homes. Yeah. Um, the wood gets wet. And it gets yeah. a little moldy. And, and, and that, they, they eat that mold. The springtails going to play. It's a pain. Yeah, springtails can get a little tough. I mean, there's a springtail kit that we do provide on the website that comes with a few different products. You know, so it's as well. So yeah. So have, 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 patience. Have, have patience. Yeah. yeah. In terms of uh, now, we have a navigator. So navigator is another fit for now that we carry. This is from Mr. Frank. One bottle of 78 ounces of navigator, about the correct amount to apply for 3,300 square feet home. Um, okay. Well, that's going to – there's – you can't answer that from the right. The yeah, free. So I mean, roughly seventy-eight ounces covers one hundred and twenty linear feet. Uh, that's more than that. Well, it's it depends on one hundred twenty uh, if you're going max. Max at max at one point eight, right? right? So right. it's one hundred and twenty linear feet. One hundred twenty to two hundred forty linear feet. Yeah, you um, might want to call us about that, Frank. That's that thirty-three hundred square feet. I mean, do you have a second, a third story? Uh, what, 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 what's your, what's your uh, Is it footprint? Full basement. Well, uh, crawl space, yeah, yeah. floating slab, monolithic slab, that's all going to factor. Now, yeah. what's the best, sticking with the herbicides, um, best post herbicide for control of poa anna in fescue? In fescue? In fescue. Okay, um, there, there really isn't one. It's really tough. Because you've got one cool season grass in another cool season grass. Okay. Okay. You're going to probably have to spot treat with a non-selective, like Roundup. And, uh, and then the, go ahead and come out. Saw, yeah. Any any negate MSM or any of that that probably no won't no be I mean, that, not that for that, 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 that for that, that fescue you will yeah. damage it. So your your best bets is a pre-emergent which has to be done in September October depending on where you are. Fall pre-emergent to stop the seeds from germinating. Cool. Once it's out, you can wait it out. Pre-emergent is crucial. Yeah, you know, it's a, it's an annual weed, so it's going to die in the summer. So I, crucial. I can't ever remember someone having Poana and Fescue and calling. It's it's rare. It's, it's a rare. transitional it's zone, in Southern Tennessee. It's a transitional yeah. zone yeah. in Southern yeah. Tennessee. Yeah. It's, it's one mostly, of those. It's mostly Bermuda. Yeah, it's yeah. mostly in Bermuda, mostly pretty pretty further you know further south yeah. in Tennessee. But if uh, if you do have it, mm -hmm. it's probably going to be a spot treat with yeah. something like Roundup. Right, uh, glyphosate the active ingredient. It'll kill everything, but that's and the, just remember the following year, do your pre emergent, pre emergent, and, and even then you'll still see some. I mean, so I every know. year you put pre emergent, it works better. Yep, absolutely. Every you season do you don't more. miss it, the better it works. It's just like one of those, those you snowball can cut your wings problem yeah. in half every yeah. year, yeah. two or three years down the road. You're pretty close to not. Not many weeds. Got another question about carpenter ants. Um, I'll answer this real quickly. I think it's this is by uh, uh WK. Um, heavily forest area with a large of large of carpenter ants in the summer, mostly outside, but some are inside. I mean, for inside, you probably want to stick. And he's used the max force fleet and the advanced granules with no apparent effect. 
you need to step up to your sprays and take tours and spray the foundation doors and windows. I think that's a good option if you're coming inside the house. That will control the ones in the house. Not in, but, but not, not in, for the yard, it's going to be a different. Like, for the for the yard, your granulars finding that 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 trail and putting the granulars yeah, out. But I mean, three seventy five A is still one of the best baits out there for carpenter ants. In my right. opinion, absolutely, you know? you got to find the trails. You got right. to find the trails. If you're randomly sprinkling it, you're I call that fishing. You're just yeah, fishing for carpenter sporadic one or two ants. They're probably the scouts anyhow. Right. They're not there to pick up the food, right? right? So they're go out in the evening, find yeah, the trail, find, find the, the trail, trail, lay the bait next to them, let them pick up the bait, drop the pheromones, and start with there um so let's go with some more winners that we have um we have a leah g from norton virginia congratulations all right and then i think we have a sunil duck from uh, winter garden florida as well all right that so makes, that makes eight, that's ten. ten that's all of them that's all of them that's all of them all right so we got the winner though. I didn't get one. You'll get some of those shifts soon. I mean, we'll, we'll ship them out to you within the next day or so, and you'll, you will get in contact with you and all of that as well. So you'll definitely get those out to you soon. Um, now we have a another uh, fun. We have a fun lawn question. A lot of a lot of lawn questions coming up. But this one's more fungus and grubs. Okay. Okay. So we get both lawn fungus and grubs every year. Okay, can you have a product combined with both, uh, Caravan G? Yeah. Caravan G is a good lawn fungicide as as well as it'll uh, take care of both. Care yeah. It's designed for both. Um, Being in Maryland, putting it down now, I don't think it's going to be really effective for grubs. It's still a little chilly up there. It's, yeah, it's you a little want to early. wait. Wait a little more, a little bit. The okay. uh, the life cycle of grubs is such that you want to get it when the eggs are laid, and the eggs aren't going to be laid probably until June. So. Uh, you could get it down some of the chafer beetles yeah. a little earlier than that, so it could be May, cool. but I wouldn't do it any sooner than middle of May. What were you counting the winners, by the way? Were you counting the winners? The winners? Uh, you were on because I messed up. We were we had eight. I got to give out two more sprayers. Uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> you won't do because that. No, it was only been eight. Okay, I'm sorry, guys. We have two more winners. We have I count. I'm not right. You you almost <laughs> wasn't. Funny. Walt pays the bills. Walt pays the bills. It's Jennifer hey. P. from New London, Wisconsin. I'm sorry. And Buster D. from Baton Rouge, Louisiana. Baton, Baton Rouge, and sorry. If, and if you do get a chance, write a review. Yeah, yeah definitely. Yeah, let us know what you think about them for sure. Um, if we had Dre in here, he would tell you that's Baton Rouge. Baton Rouge. Baton Rouge. <laughs> now, uh... Let's get, we got a few more questions coming in. Let's, I, we probably clear these questions out now. Um, broom sedge. Okay. Any post application herbicide for that? Yeah, the sedge, you know, sedge hammer uh, will do that. You can, you can get it with sedge hammer, uh, dismiss. Um, sulfentrazone tends to be really good against that. So any of the sulfentrazone products. Sulfentrazone definitely is a good product, isn't it? It's, it's yeah, tough to mix, sedges. but I mean, if you. It's tough to mix, but it's a good sedge killer. What about that one packet that we have that has a surfactant inside of it as well? Sedge well, Ender, Sedge, what was that? Sedge Hammer. Sedge Hammer and Sedge, sedge Hammer. Sedge Hammer and the new one is called Atticus. Is that right? They well, have a manufacturer, Atticus. Atticus. Uh, the, uh, I, I, they have a pretty big product. Just where came out, you can so. mix individual packets from Treat for Sedge. I mean, I mean, you have these individual packets. They're not too heavy on cost either. So if you're having like splashes of Sedge here and there, it won't hurt. It won't okay, hurt. I don't have a label in front of me, so I'm, I'm going from memory, but I believe. With Sedge Hammer and that Atticus product, that it's uh, one packet to a gallon of water it covers is, it eighteen hundred for, main, for yeah. maintenance. For, yeah. two, two packs for, for clean. Is that what it is? Yeah. Okay. Now, um, in terms of, I'm trying to figure out what Lynn's trying to ask us. We have a Tordin RTU. Is Tordin RTU the best Tordon. chemical to kill unwanted stumps and trees? It's Tordon. Tordon. Yeah. Tordon is a uh, restricted use is the problem with that. So we don't yeah. sell it. Um, yeah. uh, so we do not have it as restricted side. use. Yeah, so so do we have anything that might kill unwanted stumps and trees outside of trifle beer? Well, if, if if the stump has already been cut, yeah. Um, if you're just trying to remove the stump, well, that's a different story. Right. That's just, there's no easy way. You've got to grind it down. Or you got to grind away. it down. Um, uh, interesting thing about stump removal is that fertilizer will speed up the decay of that. A right. Lot. So okay. A lot of people will drill holes in the stump, put some fertilizer in those holes, cover it with mulch, and uh, try and keep that 
and then put a tarp over that. A lot of people do that for mm -hmm. help to quickly rot a stump. It would speed the process speed up. Speed the process. You know, five-fold. Termites. Well, so. Yep, exactly. Termites. So. I have a question about farming. We get a lot of questions about fertilizers mm -hmm. for the yard. What can do? What do we have for fertilizers on yards? We've got a few. We've got the, the liquid fertilizer. Okay. The uh, the uh, 18, what's it, uh, LMAX. LMAX, okay. Um, and that's okay. a really good high quality fertilizer um, that can be put on if, you, if you've got a larger area to do. We've got a pasture fertilizer mm -hmm. from Monterey. That pasture that's fertilizer a, tends to do a, really a good, good job, good doesn't good product. it? Good yeah. Pasture um, fertilizer is a good product. Everybody that's talked to me on the phone about their lawn is probably sick of me telling them about yeah. Mel Organite. I push Mel Organite a okay. lot. Okay. They don't sell it. You can buy that. Most anybody's got a good uh, garden center, Lowe's, Home Depot, those kind of places. I've never seen a Home Depot. Um, they have it at my Home Depot. Oh, and, uh, that's where I bought my last bag. That's good. And, uh, it's a really good product. And uh, the numbers on Milorganite, if you look at the, the nitrogen content, potassium, fertilizer. Yeah, so they are pretty low. But don't think of it as plant food. We're really dealing here more with soil food. You're really stimulating the soil with the bacterial content. And that's and that, what's taking care of it. Okay. And that releases so many nutrients that there, there's probably a lot of nutrients in your soil that have that are just not available right. for the for the grass to, right. to feed on. So if you get proper um, micro um, um, you know, microbes in the soil, you will get uh, better absorption of the nutrients. A healthy soil makes healthy grass. Yeah, exactly. At the end of the day, it's also label for ornamentals. Yeah, well, exactly. It's label for everything. And it won't burn, so you can really put that on in the dead of summer. You can put yeah. it on in winter. You don't have to worry about uh, uh, hard over stress in the yard or anything like that. Exactly. In terms of spring bulbs, uh, excuse me, spring bulbs in turf, mm -hmm. uh, what can you do in Florida? Um, I That's, I, I, I'm trying to kill bulb type flowers that have migrated into the turf. Oh, okay. Now, now that's going to be a difficult because one. the bulb is. You've got to get something that is systemic. It's okay. Going to down. Okay. So we're looking at either triclopyr okay. or glyphosate. Glyphosate you know, is triclopyr. So that's your Roundup or triclopyr product. But then again, I mean, knowing what type of turf you have, Justin, is also going to be important for us, too. I mean, yeah, if exactly. I use some triclopyr, the stuff's very, I mean, triclopyr kills kudzu, right? So yeah. it, it, it kills yeah. bamboo. Yeah, you want to be careful um, with that. You have to be careful with triclopyr because you will burn your if you I mean you'll spray the whole yard down you'll burn the whole yard so we don't need that and and obviously same thing with roundup it'll kill same so thing so be careful with that but spot applications with those if you're careful can can really help and herbicides is always very important to follow the right on yeah the yeah yeah herbicides you gotta follow the label I guess herbicides can get difficult in the sense I mean keep it out you guys know you guys deal with your yards all the time it's difficult having a healthy grass right a healthy green yard is difficult it's it not easy it's, it's work you're gonna put in work so in other words if a label calls for one ounce per gallon and you put five ounces per gallon you you're gonna stress your grass out just that five I, times better uh no <laughs> <laughs> probably killing that that's a work yeah. Justin it was actually Justin with the bulb the bulb type flowers he has bluegrass Okay, so I think, yeah, with, with bluegrass, you're, you, you're still kind of playing around. You're still, so, still yeah. playing around, yeah. yeah. Uh, triclopyr would triclopyr. be the safer option. Triclopyr is an option for you at this but point. But still, I would spot sure. treat with that where you can. A broadcast of triclopyr is, yeah. Yeah. I, I just don't think any lawn appreciates that. Yeah. Um, now, I mean, in terms of, I don't know if you guys, we have a new product line. Have you guys seen the Wonder Side products that we put on the website? Those yeah. great alternative essential oils and such like that yeah. for homeowners. So there's some really cool stuff out there for dogs and cats. I really should have put some stuff up here, but it's called Wonder Side. Uh, it's a new product that we have. These are green products for the most part. And these are actually flea medications, flea collars for your dog, flea shampoos and flea soaps that they have. And it's a really good line by Wonderside. This lady started the line when she put these conventional medications on. Her dogs had a strange reaction. So she then went in and started Wonderside out. Um, but for homeowners, Wonderside, if you don't want to put those heavy toxins on your dogs with any kind of insecticides, Wonderside is definitely an option that you have. And they have a variety of product that they you can you use. Know, one thing I think that people need to come to grips with, too, is, is people my age are, are skeptical of green products right you know, because right there was right. a time when if it said organic or green that just to us that meant it didn't work 
Um, you know, it's, yeah, it's safe, but but it doesn't work. Um, but they've come a long way. They have come there, a long there way. There are a lot of essential yeah. oils that are yeah. used in products now. And some of these are some of the fastest killing products I've seen. Uh, they're not always as good uh, residual. But they kill. As, they get rid of what's there. Yeah, absolutely. And then it takes yeah, time for these levels good. to populate to where they were before. Exactly. And that's one thing I tell people uh, that when you kill yeah. majority of these insects off in the yard, and you get a job and you kill them, they're not going to be at that level that you saw. Have, have, have you used? It, it takes time. I know you do a lot of fogging. Have you used the um, the MT, the Ecovia MT? No. Um, it could I, be a, a mosquito and tick. Right. Yes. That's a green product for mosquitoes and ticks. And I was extremely impressed with it. It did a really good job. I don't think I got as long out of it as I got out of Bifen, but it, it was works. definitely longer than the original Ecovia formula. Um, okay. I definitely got that. It's a thicker concentrate. It is. It's much thicker. Um, and they say the uh, the thicker oils that they use clean to the better. Smothers and on. and uh, so you get a lot of residual like this. A lot of my green companies that I'll deal with, mm -hmm. my pest control operators at like the green mm -hmm. companies, they they use mosquito, equally yeah. empty. Yeah. I mean that's their go to okay. they add a surfactant with it too. And do you think that's a little bit safer option for bees and stuff like that too? Or is I do. Yeah, yeah absolutely yeah, it's definitely a safer option have for the bees. toxicity against pollinators, uh, you know, butterflies and honeybees and that kind I of mean, thing. I mean, even with the wonder side, they come, they have products for fleas and ticks as well for homeowners. I mean, they got products for fleas and tick sprays. They have ant sprays. They have insecticides as well that you can actually put around the property too if you need to. The wonder side is definitely a good option for you guys to take if they want natural organic products for their dogs and around their home. It's definitely an option that you guys have for sure. Um, earwigs. Quick question about earwigs by Tommy. Mm -hmm. um, spraying Tau Star outside and inside, it's not doing it. You're going to have to get something down into the, the soil uh -huh. where they are. Um, and you could do that with an EC formulation like yeah. we talked about. Yeah. So yeah. if he's using Bifen XTS, that would be a good start. Yeah. You could use Bifen granules and water those in. You get a longer okay. residual activity out of that. Um, but you you need that water on those granules to move it down into, into the, soil. the soil. So that's going to be important. So many of these bugs that are that are in the soil like that to get under the mulch, getting to them is is you know ninety percent of the battle. Most yeah, insecticides will kill them. It's like millipedes. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, no. If you get to them, it'll kill them. But the millipedes, I think, is definitely coming up when you have all those heavy rains and you have a heavy rain to get to not drown. They come out of soil. Absolutely. You can also with earwigs, you can rake the mulch back if it's a mulch area. Mm -hmm. A lot of people will rake the mulch back, treat the soil, and then put the mulch back in place. That's a Okay, another yeah, question about grubs. I'm gonna answer real quick. How to kill grub worms? Um, you have a uh It's multiple treatments. Do it in the dead heat of the summer. Don't do it when it's a little bit cooler because it's not going to be as effective as it can be when they're about to reproduce. Yeah. Right. Exactly. And their shells. So timing is really the thing. The with that. heat of the summer is when you want to focus on. If you do grubs. it too late in the summer, they've already yeah. gone through several instars. Yeah. And they're going to be a large grub that's going to be almost impossible to kill. Yeah. You want to have it down as the eggs are laid when they first hatch out of the egg. And and, and that's going to, people say grubs, most people think about Japanese beetle right. larvae, okay. but there's also chafer beetles, which start a little earlier. They're typically in May. So yeah, a, a May or June application is probably just right for grub control. Yeah. And if they use a granular product, like the imidacloprid 0.5G, that's going to give you season long, yeah. season long control. So that's one. You put it down once and you get the residual for the rest of the season. Exactly. Yeah, you're it's in, good you're stuff. into the fall and you don't need it again until, until next uh, late spring, early summer. Um, I have another question uh, from Mr. James Gray. Soil has become hydrophobic. Mm. Can you do anything about that? Surfactants. Surfactants. Uh, surfactants will help break that. Okay. But then, but that's a temporary fix. A surfactant will help break the surface tension so the water seeps into the soil better. Yeah. Yeah. But you need to up the uh, the organic content of that soil. So manures, uh, Make compost, it healthier, healthier. sawdust, okay. anything you can to add organic content to that soil is going to be a crucial part. I've never had that question. That's yeah. in Florida yeah. where they have what called sugar sand. And uh, I've seen it in in our store. It went up there on 1792. Yeah. Uh, there's a there's a spot where I put water hose on it. And you could see a puddle form. And it so like, you go it? kick, you yeah. go kick, yeah. move yeah. the water out of the way, kick the dirt right there, and it, uh, it's half an inch down, it's just dry as a bone. But water's sitting on top of it. Wow. So, but I did that same thing and took a little drop of the surfactant, 
and I just put it on there, and it was within 10 seconds that water just went. Right, right in where wow. used to. So oh, right in. Surf right in. is the way to go. Yep. Um, we have a pretty good question from Mr. Richard. He's in the I would tell them Alligator 90. Alligator 90 for surfactants. Yeah. Alligator 90 for your surfactants. It's a good buy. It's a good yeah, cost. Really it does what it needs to. Well. I mean, you can even add surfactants with mosquito control. If you're doing mosquito control and you're spreading your yard and your bushes, trees, and shrubs, add a surfactant with that insecticide for a longer reason. It makes it a little bit more rain fast I, um, yeah, well, yeah. So, well not only that it just it spreads out on the leaf better it doesn't drip and and puddle into the, the, the ground which is yeah, what we need yeah, I mean, if you put a spray bottle and hit a regular leaf okay uh, with a poly tree whatever yeah, beads up and a lot of it rolls off yeah uh, so for to going back to richard and his question he has an apartment he manages an apartment unit six unit apartment unit um he's got ants on the second floor this is what can you recommend for perimeter protection good for now Pepperdale. And then Absolutely. alpine on the inside, maybe some non repellent you, you could do you could do alpine. Cut back uh, on any trees that might be on the building. If you have uh, any tree branches touching that, please cut those down. Right? Uh, right. Yeah, you could look at uh, um, Doxamet, NXT. Yep. And uh, I'm drawing a blank on the other one, the uh, the Phantom Generic. Yeah. 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 Uh, uh, Spectre. Spectre. Yeah. yeah the Spectre, Spectre is, is a great option. Uh, Spectre and yeah, is a great option for insides, isn't yeah. it? And it works. Yeah, it works. Like it's a generic for, yeah. for those of you familiar with Phantom Aerosol, Spectre is a generic of the Phantom Aerosol. Comes with a the typical uh, can like this with a flip up straw. Yeah. So you yeah. can use it without the straw or with the straw. Really good product for indoors and ants. Can you hand me the pottery one? Yeah. If there is one product I would. Advise everybody to get would be a pyrethrin product called Striker 54. It kills everything. It's pyrethrin, and pyrethrin is one of the oldest uh, insecticides, insecticides known to man. Comes from a flower grown primarily in Australia and, and Africa. Uh, kills. It's really designed for flying insects, but if you have a, a, a big cockroach come in your house or a spider that's worrisome, and you don't want to step on it. Uh, and you don't want to go mix up a batch to spray it, have this around your house and just it last, was fine. Year, last year, years, last, last for years. I've got a can at my house now that's probably five years old. I, I usually have two or three cans, I can't even remember where I put them. Aerosols are definitely an easier option. I mean, gone are the days that you have to mix up these big fancy tanks and spray things around, right? If you look at some of the kits that you have to combine all these items together, those come ready to go, ready to spray. Yeah, you wouldn't want to do it outside. No, oh, in, in terms of indoors, yeah. right? Aerosols are definitely like the right, I sometimes believe, like, I think you can use aerosols and get away with mixing things up and, and putting so many steps. And not, not something like red or something, because it comes no, out, no, not, no. I'm not experimenting that, but uh, it comes out oily. And uh, makes a mess wherever you spray it. Mm. Yep. Mm -hmm. I guess what kills an insect is the wall. <laughs> yeah, probably does. We'll definitely be getting in contact with all of our winners. Um, I definitely want to thank everybody for spending some time with us. I mean, this is. Well, you're doing a fine job being a narrator. Yeah. He's the MC. Yeah. yeah. It's, it's been, I mean, this is definitely. Joe something. Rogan, beware. <laughs> <laughs> But we'll have someone coming for you. We'll definitely get in contact with all of you guys. Okay. Um, we're gonna do one last question and kind of cut it off from there. Uh, the last question is the ex okay. So this is from a uh, PTO, the exterminator. Okay. Okay. So yeah, we'll definitely. I'm sorry, but I didn't see that one. Um, what should I use for centipedes in a finished space? I, I would um, step it up. Onslaught. There's so many options. Yeah, there's so many there's, options. There's, there's, I, I'm have surprised that you're saying nothing's working. I'm wondering yeah. if. I'm wondering if they're dying and they and, keep coming inside. And they just keep coming. So I mean, isn't it also important the by the foundation problem. to push back the gravel, push back your pine straw. Don't spray on top of the pine straw and gravel. Push it back. That get it harder to get stuff down. You got to get to the soil. I'm sure you've looked in uh, unfinished parts, a mechanical room or whatever. This uses a little bit more moisture. They might be coming from there. Could be. Uh, you could. You could go with a little desiccating dust there. Yeah, yeah, yeah absolutely. Yeah. Some Mexa, so. Sun Mexa dust would be a good thing there. You could try the only downside of a, a Sun Mexa dust is it's a dust. I mean, it's messy, it's messy. But boy, I tell you what, you want something in an area like that long though. Time. Yeah, it, it, I wouldn't put it in the, uh, the uh, finished part, but I'd go back into that storage area yeah. that's usually adjacent to a finished basement and. Uh, and there. And going back to some of the uh, the old school texts that we have out there, um, Steve and I were just talking yeah. about how much we like wettable powders. 
Oh, and yeah. They're, again, they're, they're, they've kind of fallen by the wayside with all of the, the new uh, stuff, micro cancellated yeah. stuff and everything. But uh, the powders work. That, those wettable powders leave a powder residue behind. And on I some surfaces, it. it's visible. But in an unfinished area of a basement, I think oh, a yeah. wettable powder might be a really oh, good gosh. option. Either like a Demon WP, Cyper WSP. And it gives it longer resistance. Yeah, all of those. Yeah, for sure. So, yeah. Well, guys, it's been fun. Uh, this is, concludes our hour that we have. Um, we'll definitely reach out to all the winners. You have all of our numbers. Um, you guys have any kind of questions or concerns about anything? You have any other questions that you want to talk about? Don't hesitate. Pick up the phone. The same guys that you see here are the ones answering the phones for you. So we'll definitely be here to answer all your questions. Um, we'll reach out for the winners, and I'm sure we'll be doing another YouTube live soon. Thank anything you else? Guys. Congratulations. Thank for you, winners. guys. Yeah. Thank you. Thanks thank you so much for putting up with us. Yeah, thank you for your time and energy with us. Thank you. See ya. All right. Yeah, man, that was fantastic.